Alrighty folks, I am back today and today we are going to talk about hair. <laughs> Uh, because it is a hot topic amongst the uh, trans and non-binary community, uh, gender non-conforming, anybody who's doing any kind of hormone therapy, everybody's always freaking out about their hair, whether real or imagined. Uh, there are a lot of myths surrounding uh, hair loss and hair growth and everything. Um, of course, I'm not going to have enough time to uh, go over all of these things. I'm not here to go over like the over-the-counter herbal supplements and stuff, you know, like I mean biotin is something that seems very popular to people but be aware taking biotin by mouth you can get some pretty good hot flashes and stuff whenever you're taking that whatever i mean it's not going to kill you but whatever um i would recommend topical type biotin stuff but anyways so i'm not really going to be here going over um herbal stuff and things like that what i'm going over is more what we actually see and do uh, at spectrum the other clinic uh, for hair loss actual hair loss, not um, perceived hair loss. So here's the thing. If I personally lost hair at the rate that I think that I do, I would have been bald yesterday. Like, there's no way. Like, I always see, like, just my hair's clogging the drain, my brush is always full of hairs, I run my fingers through my hair, just hair city. It feels like I'm constantly losing hair at a rate that cannot be sustainable. However, I'm almost 40. And it's been doing that my whole life and clearly I have hair on my head um, so it's normal uh, to lose 50 to 100 strands of hair uh, per day that's a pretty good bit whenever you get down to it and you're looking at it um, if you're doing things to your hair such as constantly brushing it or running your fingers through it or pulling it into a ponytail or any number of things that involve just messing with it more times a day than just a wash and a couple of brushings during the day then you could be the cause of what's causing your hair loss because you're just pulling on it constantly the hair's not gonna like just sit around it's if you keep doing that it's gonna come out so um, actual hair loss is whenever you have started to exceed that 100 hair a day limit and uh, you know whenever you look at the hairs that you're getting you know if you look at the ends of them you'll see the little bulb you know that actually came out of the follicle in your scalp meaning that it let go and fell out not that it you know ripped off or whatever or you know the strand broke from you pulling and stuff like you would see like tons of hairs with the little bulb on it not just like a few here and there uh, so anyway, so be sure, you know, look if you, you know, if you have the chance, see what kind of hair loss you're getting. Maybe you're just getting it from tearing your hair and it's not actual, like, just falling out. Um, another thing that I do highly advise people to do, um, because a lot of this does have to do with anxiety, um, and anxiety can cause some excess hair shedding, uh, as well as things like uh, illness, uh, certain medications that people get put on when they have chronic illnesses, um, your stress level, you know, all these things can cause some excessive hair shedding for a period of time. Uh, and so these are things that resolve either by getting better or having that, whatever is causing it, such as stress, resolve. Um, if you live under chronic, chronic stress, <laughs> You need to find a solution. That's no way to live. But anyways, so I mean, there are other things that cause kind of hair shedding and hair loss that um, that are you're able to act on without any kind of like medication or you know over the counter supplements and things like that. So definitely check and see. Are you having like loads of stress? Were you sick recently? Do you have a chronic condition uh, that you take medication for? That that medication could be affecting the. Um, the resiliency of your hair follicles and whatnot. And then also check yourself, are you constantly brushing your hair, pulling it up, doing stuff with it, it's to where manipulating it around all day could be breaking it. Um, but anyway, so back to what I highly recommend people do is to get a baseline picture or video of the top of your head or the area that you're most concerned about. Like some people are more concerned about like right here or something like that, but whatever the area is, that you think uh, you're either going to have loss or that you are watching because you think you are currently having hair loss, you need to get a good video and you know mark down the date that you did it and check that 
once a month, you know, do another video or picture once a month at the same time of day in the same lighting conditions, as close to the same conditions each time as you possibly can because, you know, from one picture to the next, you're gonna see some differences, like your hair might have been parted differently, you might have had some extra gel in it this time or whatever. So just from one picture to the next, I wouldn't call that like, oh, there's evidence of hair loss, you know, in case it's just like right now my hair looks like this, but maybe it's parted like this next time and it's, you see more of my scalp, but now it's more back together, so it still, you know, looks, you know, normal-esque again. So you wanna look from month to month for at least, four months at bare minimum four months to see the changes as they go really I recommend more like six months because it takes a lot of time for actual hair loss to show up you know if it's just some normal shedding of hair like I said the 50 to 100 strands uh, a day then you're gonna be fine there's not gonna be really any changes going on if you've got some uh, extra hair shedding maybe from one of these conditions uh, that I mentioned before, you might see some evidence there, but if not, then again, you're fine anyway. Uh, if you have actual hair loss, then you would be able to see, you know, probably from 0.1 to four to six months later, where you actually have like something where you can point to and be like, see, you know, that section actually did have some more uh, hair follicles that were healthy at that point in time, or you could, you know, like if it was here and you drew a line, and you were like, see, I can see where before the line between my ear and here, whatever, you know, and just see where the hair lines up. Uh, the reason I do this or recommend this is, like I said, there is a lot of anxiety regarding uh, hair when it comes to either someone who's doing feminizing therapy or masculinizing therapy with testosterone versus estrogen. Um, I will say those who are more at risk for developing hair problems are gonna be the transmasculine people because whenever you go on testosterone and you raise your testosterone levels, what happens to that testosterone is it goes through a process of change. Um, I guess I won't go into the science behind it this time because a lot of people probably get bored, but basically, um, you know, it goes through this process of change with 5-alpha reductase. Uh, to change into DHT, which is dihydrotestosterone. And dihydrotestosterone, DHT, is what's responsible usually for the hair loss that you see uh, up here. Um, and if you have high levels of DHT or something like that, you can get that lab checked. It's not one that we usually run, but if it's something that you're overly concerned about, we can certainly run that and you can ask for it. Um, <clears throat> but at any rate, uh, so DHT is going to be what's responsible for this, and the higher your testosterone levels are, the more potential DHT you could have. So what do you do about that? Uh, well, there are a couple of medications that can help with this. Um, they all have side effects and pros and cons and everything. And after I get done talking about this, I'll get over to the uh, feminizing stuff. So just give me about two or three minutes here on the, uh, on the masculine side, and then I'll get over to the feminine side, medications and everything too. Uh, but they're very similar medications and treatments. Uh, really, they're the same. It's just your risk for hair loss is higher, uh, the higher that your T levels are. And typically we drop our feminizing patients' T levels quite low so that they're at a lower risk. At any rate, so if we're raising your T levels, you're on testosterone therapy, so your DHT levels are potentially higher, um, we can do something called uh, finasteride. Uh, there's a couple of different medications that are all similar, basically do the same thing. What they do is that 5-alpha reductase that I just told you is what's responsible for changing testosterone into dihydrotestosterone. Uh, it disrupts that process, essentially. And so then you don't convert testosterone into as much DHT, so thereby lowering your DHT levels. Now, it can, in some people, affect their actual testosterone levels as well, but usually not to a very great degree, so it's not something you need to worry about if you're injecting testosterone. Um, but it, I do, you know, I just like to mention it because I'm just, I like to know every little bit. So there might be someone out there like me that wants to know every little bitty bit. Um, so anyway, so... Uh, finasteride would block the conversion of T into DHT, thereby lowering DHT levels to help protect uh, your, the spots on your body that are susceptible to that. Uh, and there's more spots on your body that are susceptible to DHT. The rest of your body hair and everything can actually be uh, susceptible to that, uh, as well as like facial hair and whatnot. So 
Uh, you can have effects on different parts of the body, not just the hair if you're taking something like finasteride. Another thing to be aware of whenever you're taking finasteride is that um, it, in studies it has been linked to showing an a increase in the rate of depression amongst people who are on it long term. And when I say long term, I mean like somewhere more than like one year or so. So if you're already someone who is prone to depression or you already have depression and whatnot, which is an awful lot of our patients, you know? Uh, so it's one of those things where you really gotta balance that. Like, is that worth the risk or whatnot? Um, you know, because I mean, it's not one of those medications you can just take for three months and woohoo, you don't have to worry about taking it anymore. Once you stop taking it, you know, the same problem is going to arise. Um, so then there are a couple other measures you can do. Like, I know there's over-the-counter stuff and everything you can use. Um, and actually there is um, minoxidil, which is Rogaine. So what, uh, and you can get that over-the-counter. Uh, you can go right on down to Walmart and buy some. Uh, either the generic or the name brand Rogaine, doesn't matter. Uh, the active ingredient is minoxidil and what minoxidil does is the same exact thing that finasteride did it interrupts that process of conversion but it's more localized so you're going to apply it exactly to the site like let's say that your only place that you were worried about was these corners right here so you apply that there every night or whatever uh, and it's going to protect those two places only and it's not going to have this systemic effect on your body like finasteride would where it affects everything and can lead to depression and all that stuff um, so in that regard minoxidil slash rogaine is a little bit of a better choice but you do have to be aware that it can be harmful to animals um, particularly cats it can make dogs sick but to cats, minoxidil is toxic, so you don't want to leave it laying around where they could get a hold of it and chew the bottle. Or, you know, if you apply it to your head, don't let, you know, I mean, cats get everywhere. Don't let them come love up on you and, you know, lick your head and lick that stuff right off. Um, so you have to be very careful about that kind of stuff. Um, oh, and one other thing to mention about finasteride is that um, in cisgender men, it has been shown to cause uh, potential sexual dysfunction. Now, it's unclear if that would carry over in any significant way to uh, transmasculine individuals, but it does bear mentioning that it does cause some, uh, some sexual dysfunction uh, and the whole depression thing, so do be aware of that. Um, next topic would be the uh, Powers hair formula. So anybody's heard about Dr. Powers out there in Michigan, you know, he creates all kinds of neato stuff for uh, for transgender patients. And one of the things he works on constantly is his own personal uh, formula for a, a, a hair regrowth formula uh, that not only kind of helps prevent loss, but also promotes regrowth. He's had some pretty excellent results, to be honest, and um, he's given the formula uh, um, a way to pretty much anybody who wanted it like he's not making any money off of it he's just out there trying to help and um, people have just taken it and run with it I've seen some friends of mine who've had really good results with it um, and then he's had his own patients you know that he's had good results and um, I've seen some websites of places that sell you know sell some version of his uh, formula and uh, they post the before and after pictures. They look quite good, you know, and actually we're trying trying some out on Lee right now. We'll do about a six month trial or longer and uh, whenever we finally get to the end, we'll, uh, we'll probably tell everybody about the results. But anyways, so, um, so those are the usual things that we do starting out if someone really does have some proof of losing hair uh, for transmasculine patients. Although, like I said, using caution because of the side effects that can happen with any of, of those. Um, now on the trans feminine side with estrogen, so a lot of y'all really psych yourselves out, like totally psych yourselves out um, over hair loss. And a lot of this is going to be because it's hair loss that you were experiencing before you got on hormone therapy um, and you're scared it's going to continue. Um, another thing to mention is that um, anybody really, whenever you get on any type of hormone therapy, it's going to put your body through a short period of stress that usually lasts for anywhere from a few weeks to a few months. 
uh, and I see this over and over whenever someone first gets on, you know, whatever, if they get on estrogen and then their testosterone levels are dropping, um, you know, the body is under stress. If you go on testosterone, you know, testosterone levels are rising, estrogen is somewhat suppressed as well, and so then, you know, the body is stressed. So whenever you're going through this period of stress, that, again, back to what I said in the beginning, you put stress on the body, you can see a little bit of excess shedding. Now, whenever you see this, this is a temporary state, uh, but it does freak a lot of people out. Um, just something to be aware of, like I said, kind of be aware of how much loss is going on 50 to 100 strands a day is normal be aware of what you're doing with your hair either running your hair fingers through your hair pulling it up brushing it all the time if you wash it more than once a day you're probably going to be seeing more loss as well um, but then when it comes to like you know if you have you know really good proof yes I am losing hair no matter what you know I do like there's no no question I've had pictures and everything and whatever so what we do for it is basically going to be similar in, in uh, theory and use to what we do for our transmasculine patients um, with regards to the whole DHT in case you skipped through the masculine uh, part so testosterone converts um, into DHT which is dihydrotestosterone uh, when it does this and it becomes DHT, DHT has actions on various parts of the body, one of them being up here around your hair follicles, and it is largely responsible for that male uh, pattern type loss, uh, as it is called. So, what do you do about it? Uh, same things you do in transmasculine patients, although, as I mentioned before, this actually is less of an issue, usually, for trans women because what we do whenever we get your estrogen levels boom way up, your T levels boom way down, that gives way less testosterone available for conversion into DHT, thereby lowering your DHT levels on its own. Um, and like I mentioned before as well, we can test DHT. We don't routinely because it's not really that important of a hormone when it comes to transitioning itself. But if you're curious to see if DHT could be a reason why you are having hair loss, then all we need to do is, you know, do a DHT test uh, on your blood work and we will see. Is it higher than? Uh, my, mine is, my level is going to be like 40. If it's over 40, we got problems. If it's over 30, probably got problems. If it's under 30, that's not really much worth worrying about. Um, but anyways, so I mean, but don't get caught up on numbers. I mean, numbers aren't everything as I discuss in another video, but, uh, but anyway, so with regards to that, so your DHT levels are going to be dropping anyway. You go through a period of adjustment and stress on the body as you get on hormone therapy, or if you change your dose at any point in time, it can put the body back through that stressful, uh, pattern. And so you could see an increase in hair shedding at that time that again lasts for a couple weeks to a couple of months or so and then should kind of slow off but uh, anyways if it's continuing to happen and you do need actual treatment then again finasteride is a choice um, it's you know it's pill taken once a day but it does have consequences you know over time uh, if you're on it for a long period of time, meaning more than one year, it can uh, worsen or cause uh, depression-like symptoms. So if you're already depressed, probably not the best idea, best choice. Um, the medication just like it is going to be minoxidil slash Rogaine, and that's that stuff that you apply topically to the area that you're worried about. Uh, and it acts just the same as finasteride, only it is localized instead of, sis uh, I can't talk, instead of systemic. <laughs> and um, so when you apply it, it actually blocks the conversion of testosterone into DHT at that site rather than the whole body. So you don't get those same effects as like depression and whatnot. And like I mentioned before, it has been shown in cisgender men uh, to cause sexual dysfunction. And we're just not too sure how that translates over to either trans feminine or trans masculine people. Does it have any crossover? Probably, but to what extent? We really don't know, but it is something to be aware of. Um, but the depression symptom is probably what I would be most wary of there. Um, and then of course, anytime you're adding medicine, you're adding medicine and it's more stress on like the liver and stuff like that. So, eh. 
Uh, so the topical minoxidil, Rogaine, good choice. Um, some people get annoyed having to apply it every night and whatnot, but I mean, it does save your liver and it does save you from those other potential effects of sexual dysfunction and or depression. Um, it is toxic to cats, as I mentioned. Uh, it can make dogs sick, so don't let them have the bottle. Don't let them lick any areas you have applied it to. If you apply it and then lay immediately in bed, don't let them lay on your pillow or anything like that. So it's just more you gotta be aware if you have pets around you and you're applying it and they might be able to get into it, so just be aware. Um, and then also, you know, there is the uh, Powers Hair Formula. Um, that I mentioned that trans guys can use, trans gals, non-binary pals, anybody in between. Um, so it is a conglomeration, I don't know what to call it, it's just several different um, compounds that Dr. Powers has been tweaking here and there through the years uh, that he has found to be beneficial. Um, you know, you can check it out. I think, um, I don't know if we have the link up on our website right now, but I mean, honestly, you can just Google Dr. Powers hair formula and you can find any number of places that are uh, selling it and you can check it out um, But it's got you know, it has minoxidil in it. It also has biotin in it It has a few other things like a, an antifungal agent and stuff that will help, you know, clear up the uh, follicles themselves make them open up more and promote growth and things like that I think his latest formula probably has like eight or ten active ingredients in it um, that are all looking pretty good, have some pretty solid science behind the, the reasoning for including them. Um, but anyway, and like I said, we're, we're trying it out on Lee to see how that works. Um, we just applied it like a couple weeks ago for the first time. So, I mean, it's going to be about six months before we start talking about the results we see. But anyway, I do know people that have had good results from, uh, from that hair formula. Uh, and, you know, I've had patients use it and they've been having, you know, pretty okay results so far. It's been pretty early though, so I can't say ooh, massively great results yet. Um, I'm not a person that would ever make a great salesperson. I'm just like, yeah, they're trying it and uh, whatever. <laughs> I don't know. There are people online who rave about Dr. Power's formula um, and I'm just sitting here like, yep, I hope it works good. Yay. But anyways, I mean, it has good science behind it. I really do think it's going to help a lot of people. Um, that has to be prescribed through a compounding pharmacy. Um, just FYI, um, the one we use is Empower Pharmacy, which is one of the ones Dr. Powers uses as well. Um, very trans-affirming company, very nice people. Um, but anyways, so to sum up for both trans-masculine, trans-feminine individuals, whatever you may be on, um, finasteride is usually, you know, a, a half-decent choice, although it does have those side effects of potentially depression and or sexual dysfunction, and it's another pill that you're taking that can be hard on the liver over time. Um, and then there is topical type solutions like minoxidil slash Rogaine that you can apply, but you just can't get it around like cats and, you know, don't get it around cats. Uh, and then there's like Dr. Power's hair formula uh, that, that seems like a pretty good solution as well. Um, but like I said, a lot of it comes down to, are you psyching yourself out? We are all very hard on ourselves. Um, we are our own worst enemy whenever it comes to looks and appearance and everything. Um, I know some of my trans feminine patients who lose their mind over their testosterone levels, their testosterone could be like three. And for reference, like when they started, it could have been between 400 and 900 and now it's three and they're still losing their mind over it because they've psyched themselves out so much because of how stupid society is and it forces these unrealistic expectations on them that they feel like they have to have it to zero, which just isn't healthy, to be honest. Um, so I just don't want people out there unjustly judging themselves, uh, thinking, you know, this is happening, ah, you know, I'm going bald, and perhaps you're just going through, you know, a period of stress, which it is stressful just being trans, so I mean, hey, <laughs> you know, or it could be the period of shedding that you go through whenever you first start hormone therapy or when you change a dose or something like that. So do be aware that there are way more factors other than hormone therapy that affect this. Um, and, you know, you need to kind of check out for yourself. Am I doing things that could be uh, adding to the problem? Um, are there things going on such as sickness, stress, other medicines I'm taking? I'm not getting enough sleep or anything like that that could be contributing, that could potentially be changed or, or 
you know, altered or something like that that could make things better. And then look at hormone therapy, uh, which, like I said, hormone therapy usually causes that temporary uh, shedding and everything, but not that bad. Oh, and one mention for the trans masculine people out there. So this area right here will most definitely change and you'll get that little sharp cut out there, kind of like that widow's peak. That's almost guaranteed to happen no matter what you do. It's just a more masculine um, hairline pattern. So you will see some hair loss around here no matter what, pretty much. So I mean, don't, don't stress that one so bad. As long as it's not like you know, going back more than an inch from where it started here, you're pretty much just dealing with the regular masculine hair pattern. Um, and over on the trans feminine side, you'll usually see where this is a sharp point. It will become more like how my hairline is right here, where it's more rounded. Um, and it may even come forward by an inch or so here, just kind of depending on your age, overall health and stuff like that. So interesting factoids about hair and everything. Sorry, I know this was kind of a long video, but there is really a lot to say about hair. I get asked this question so much that I wanted to, uh, to do a video and just really kind of cover it as in depth as I could without quite boring you for more than 30 minutes and it's already 26 minutes so I do apologize about that but um, anyway hopefully I covered this topic at least decently enough that maybe you can either feel better about what's going on right now or you feel like you're better prepared next time you have an appointment with your healthcare provider to kind of ask them about the options that I mentioned in here um, I don't know y'all stay safe stay educated and uh, let me know what you think okie doke bye <laughs>